Lesson 3. The Arrangement of Electrons in Atoms The objectives for Lesson 3 are to introduce the electrostatic charges of the subatomic particles and introduce how electrons are arranged in atoms, which is known as quantum mechanics. Let's go to our textbook. In Lesson 2, we discuss the names and locations of the subatomic particles found in atoms. We stated that the atomic number for any element found on the periodic table tells us the number of protons or electrons and generally the number of neutrons found in each atom of that element. Let's continue now and learn how the electrons are arranged in atoms. Before we do that, let's look a little closer at the protons and the electrons. Based upon some experiments done by some famous chemists, it is accepted that electrons and protons carry an electrostatic charge. You might think of an electrostatic charge as being like the tiny spark you can elicit after you shuffle your feet across a carpet and then touch a doorknob. In this example, the spark you see and can even feel is negatively charged electrons moving from you through the air to the doorknob. On the atomic level, electrons carry a negative electrostatic charge. On the other hand, protons carry a positive electrostatic charge. Neutrons carry a neutral or no charge at all. With this in mind, we can see that the nucleus, since it is composed of protons and neutrons, in effect, carries an overall positive charge, while the electron cloud carries a negative charge. It is theorized that these opposite charges, the positive nucleus and the negative electron cloud, attract each other like the north and south poles of magnets attract each other. We can make an analogy in which the electrons are held in orbit around the nucleus is similar to the way the planets or any other satellites are held in orbit around the sun which is due to gravitational forces. The electrons, like the planets, have energy of motion that keeps them moving in orbits around the nucleus. While the neutrons and protons are clustered together in the nucleus, the electrons are thought to be in various arrangements circling the nucleus. It is this variation in arrangement of electrons that is responsible for the way each element interacts with other elements. In other words, the arrangement of electrons around each nucleus of an element's atoms determines the reactivity of that element. As you might suspect, some elements are highly reactive, while some appear to not react at all with others. Consider the fate of the Hindenburg. The Hindenburg was a hydrogen-filled airship of the early 1900s, which crashed and resulted in the hydrogen reacting with oxygen. The resulting raging fire consumed the entire airship. Compare the Hindenburg's hydrogen with helium, which is used today in airships and blimps and party balloons. Helium is very non-reactive compared to oxygen or even to hydrogen or even pure oxygen for that matter. Sodium, as another example, is so reactive with water that it must be stored within a solution of diesel to keep the explosive metal from coming into contact with water vapor droplets in the air. The arrangement of those tiny electrons makes an enormous and sometimes explosive difference in how elements react with other elements. Let's move on and learn more about how these electrons are arranged and how the arrangements affect an atom's reactivity. There is an area of scientific knowledge used to describe the arrangement of electrons about an atom's nucleus. This is known as quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics is just a means for describing where the electrons are, kind of like a code which can help you understand more about the atoms that make up elements. The code of quantum mechanics is based upon four quantum numbers, although only the first quantum number is actually a number, while the other three are letters or symbols. You might think of these four quantum numbers as being like the letters in our alphabet, a set of symbols which together make up words which have meaning. The four quantum numbers, when used together, create a meaningful description of the arrangement of an atom's electrons. The first quantum number is known as the principal quantum number. 
As its name implies, the principal quantum number serves as a basis upon which the other three quantum numbers are built. The principal quantum number, as we stated above, is actually a number, and the principal quantum number is a whole number. The lowest principal quantum number is 1, and the highest is 7. Each principal quantum number corresponds to the position the electrons occupy as they travel around the nucleus of an atom. In other words, not all the electrons in an atom travel in the same path at the same distance from the nucleus. They are arranged in concentric orbits or energy levels around the nucleus, just like the planets in our solar system revolve around the sun at various distances. The first orbit or energy level from the nucleus is given the principal quantum number of 1. The second orbit or energy level moving outward from the nucleus is given the principal quantum number of 2. The third orbit or energy level is given the principal quantum number of 3, and so on up until you reach the seventh level, which is given the principal quantum number of 7. You might think of these orbits or energy levels as being like the layers of rubber bands you find inside a golf ball. However, not all of these orbits are spherical or ball shaped. So far we've said that the principal quantum number tells that the electrons are arranged in various layers around the nucleus of an atom. Now the second quantum number is known as the orbital quantum number. It allows us to indicate the shape of the orbit or path that the electrons follow. There are four possible path shapes that the electrons may follow. However, only two of those shapes are readily described, which are the spherical and the pear-shaped orbit. We indicate these shapes by using a lowercase s to indicate spherical and a lowercase p to indicate pear shape. The two remaining shapes, although not well described by chemists, are given the letters d and f. Some chemists feel the d-shaped orbits are shaped like a dumbbell. And then we have the f shapes, which are not shape is not described at all. To review, the second quantum number, which is known as the orbital quantum number, tells the shape of the pathway that the electrons are following. They're designated by lowercase letters, which would be S for spherical, P for pair, D, possibly dumbbell, and the F shape. Now there can be more than one shape of orbit within each orbit or energy level. In other words, you might have a combination of shapes within each orbit or energy level. It just so happens that the principal quantum number, which is the first one we discussed, equals the variety of shapes found within each energy level. For example, the first energy level with the principal quantum number of 1 is only one shape, which would be the spherical shape. The second energy level, principal quantum number of 2, has two shapes within the level, which would be spherical and the pear shape. So how many do you think would be found on the third energy level? If you said three, you're correct. Those shapes would be the spherical, pear shape, and then the D or the dumbbell shape. The sequence of shapes is spherical, pear, then the D shape, and finally the F shape. In our course, we'll primarily be using the electrons whose or electrons fill the S, P, and D shaped orbitals. We're halfway through our discussion of how electrons are arranged in each atom and how the arrangements of electrons around the nucleus of any atom determines the reactivity of that atom. Let's re review here for a moment about and let's review what we've talked about so far. We've discussed that the principal quantum number tells the position or distance and orbit or energy level is away from the nucleus. The principal quantum number is a whole number from 1 through 7, 1 being the closest and 7 being the farthest from the nucleus. We discussed that the orbital quantum number indicates the shape of the orbit. We said that these shapes could be S, which stood for spherical, P for pear shape, D possibly being dumbbell shape, and then the F shape. Let's continue now with the third quantum number. The third quantum number which is known as the magnetic quantum number, 
tells the direction or orientation in space that each orbit has. The magnetic quantum number tells how the orbit is positioned along imaginary lines or axes which go right through the center of the nucleus of the atom. These axes are given the notations x, y, and z. The x-axis runs right and left, the y-axis runs up and down, and the z-axis runs into and out of the page or surface. If you laid a pencil across this page, going left from right, it would be aligned with the x-axis. If you laid a pencil going up and down on the page, it will be aligned with the y-axis. If you insert a pencil through the page, it will be aligned along the z-axis. The magnetic quantum number utilizes these three orientations about the center of an atom, x, y, and z. The magnetic quantum number only applies to the p or pear-shaped orbits, and we're concerned with regarding the x, y, and z orientations. Together, these orientations might appear like this. Let's pause and review again. We said that the primary, or the principal quantum number tells the layer of the electrons are found around the nucleus of an atom. The orbital quantum number tells us the shapes S, P, D, and F that the electrons, or the pathways that the electrons may be following. The magnetic quantum number tells us the orientation in space that the pear shape the electrons may be found on. Let's continue with the fourth quantum number. This quantum number is known as the spin quantum number. It tells us the directions the electrons are rotating as they travel around the nucleus of an atom. And that's where the name spin quantum number comes from. Not only are the electrons traveling in an orbit around the nucleus of an atom, they're also spinning, much like the Earth rotates on its axis as it revolves around the Sun. The direction of spin can either be clockwise or counterclockwise. It is theorized that two electrons can be found in each shaped orbit. In other words, two electrons in, in each S-shaped orbit, two in each P-shaped orbit, and so on. One of these electrons is thought, is thought to be spinning clockwise, while the other spins counterclockwise. Let's review now what we've learned in Lesson 3. We said it's the arrangement of electrons which determines the reactivity of the elements. Quantum mechanics is the system we can use to describe this arrangement of electrons in atoms. We said there were four quantum numbers. The first quantum number we call the principal quantum number and it told the layer or energy level on which the electrons were traveling. The principal quantum number was a whole number and ranged from 1 to 7. The orbital quantum number told the shape of the path on which the electrons were traveling. We said there were four possible shapes. The S stood for spherical, P for pair, D possibly dumbbell, and then the F shape. The third quantum number was called the magnetic quantum number. It told the orientation in space of the pear-shaped orbits along the x, y, or z axes. And the fourth quantum number was called the spin quantum number. It told that the electrons travel in pairs when possible, with one electron spinning clockwise and the other spinning counterclockwise. Turn now to the practice page at the end of lesson three and complete that.